let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. In Eva D. Beatty's Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start, you'll meet Maggie, a woman with a dream to run a bed and breakfast. Her husband's death spurred her to take action. And with the help of her sister Marty and her friends, Maggie gets closer to her dream day by day. However, the arrival of people challenges her life's status quo. In Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, The Book of Scattered Memories, Maggie's story continues. Maggie's mom is back in their lives, and while they learn to accept their mom, the reunion was cut short by her death. And her death made Maggie privy to her mother's memories as she stumbled upon her mother's diary, the book that contains her mother's scattered memories. Eva's love of movies and film contributed to her desire to write stories while writing her first book, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start, where she was still working at the time, so she would use the receipt tape to jot down her ideas at lunch. She completed her thoughts in part two and wrote the book of scattered memories a Maggie's Be- Bread and Breakfast story. She admits to being a daydreamer at heart and enjoys writing her daydreams down on paper for her fellow daydreamers. Both Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, a new start, and Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, the book of scattered dreams, have been rebranded by Page Turner Press and Media, and the author, Eva D. Beatty, is our guest on This Week in America. Eva, welcome to the program. A pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. A daydreamer writing down your thoughts for us uh, daydreamers as well to follow the story. You've done an excellent job in writing the uh, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast. Is there another one you're working on? I mentioned the two that are out now. Right. Yes. I'm actually starting part three. Um, It's Lilies by the Lake. And I'm excited to get started writing this. It's not going to be ready till like January or February of next year. But um, I'm excited because in this story, I'm actually for the first time, I'm writing a non-living character. And she's not a ghost, but she is a shadow. And a shadow that they see over Lake Brenda, which you will learn if you read the stories. And they call this shadow Lily. And that's where I kind of got the title of the book. Okay, you have my attention now. And I've got to wait till January or February. Got to get through the holidays with this yeah, hanging that's, over that's my head. It's come out. Yeah. <laughs> hanging over my head until the first of the year. I can't wait for that to come out. And if you're you're watching the video, we've got uh, a book cover up there. And we've got all of the books that we're showing written by, by Eva. And you can follow, if you want to find out exactly when Lilies by the Lake comes out, you can go to Eva's website, which is Eva D. Beatty, B-E-A-T-Y. Y.com. And we'll have those links on our website so you can, you can follow the progress of that. And you've written at least one other book as well. Talk about that, Sam, A, a, a Girl Undercover. I, I love that. Uh, talk about that. I don't know if you have that picture up or not, but this is Sam. Yep, we have that. A Girl that. Undercover. Yep. Oh, you have it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a story of a young lady that was uh, born with a birthmark on her face. And, um, because of that, she transforms herself into a tomboy. And um, basically, you know, I didn't know I was going to have to talk about this, but, but basically <laughs> you can find all that information on my website. And it's up right now as a paperback on Amazon. It's going to also have a new cover. And I don't know if you have that cover up as well, but it's getting a new cover as well. Yes, and actually we do. We're really on oh, top of this. And oh, I say that with some, right. some say that with some <laughs> right. su- some surprise. Yes, we're on top of that. We've got the new cover. Uh, actually, I got that. Yeah, we've got that up on the screen, uh-huh. and you'll see all these the YouTube version. And out of all the interviews, you can go to uh, YouTube and, and Google us, or go to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Hit uh, videos, and you'll see all of the videos, the uh, interview with uh, Ava, uh, Eva included in that. Let's talk about the storyline for Maggie's Bed and Breakfast. Where did this idea come from? This dreamer, again, a dreamer who decided she she wanted to do this and then finally made that decision. She was going to go ahead and open the bed and breakfast. Where did this whole idea come from? Well, actually, it, it came from me and my sister. We used to walk around our neighborhood. And in our neighborhood, we have these great big gorgeous homes with wraparound porches and large front yards. Oh, and we yes. used to joke about, we used to joke about, we should buy one of these homes and open up a bed and breakfast. What a great location. Of course, neither of us had that kind of money. And we knew that that was just a dream. And so when I start, decided to start writing, I thought, 
oh, if I can't have a bed and breakfast, maybe I can write about a bed and breakfast. So that's kind of where Maggie's bed and breakfast came to be. <laughs> that's amazing. So they're actually sort of Maggie and Marty, that's you and your sister. So these are the the, the two people, basically, that <laughs> the got idea. this started. Yeah, the idea. Yeah. Well, where did the characters come from and development of the characters? Talk about how that all began. You decided you're going to write about uh, opening a bed and breakfast. Now you have to tell a story, and it's a, a really story well done in both of these. Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, a, a new start, is the one uh -huh. we're, we're focused on. Where did the idea for the characters come from? Well, actually, for me, I mean, I worked over 40 years in a grocery store. And so I would see hundreds of people come through my line. And these people, you know, they talk like you don't hear them. So pretty much <laughs> I get a lot of ideas, but just listening to them. And then you'd see this one customer and you think, wow, that would be the perfect character, you know, and their mannerisms or their walk. It's like, wow, this is great. And so I would jot down my notes and think, I'm going to write this character into the story. And, you know, as the story develops and I see somebody else, I just add them. That's interesting. <laughs> so as you're there, like working at the, what, yeah. the checking out people in the, in the whole thing, and we mumble, is this our first day on the job? I've been in line now for 10 minutes. When we <laughs> say something like that, there's not an invisible shield that protects the two us from you. You actually no. see and hear what's, what's going right. on. Right. And, and of course, I mean, you know, you get searches <laughs> from your own life. I mean, your family, of course, you change the name or, or, <laughs> or you would use their mannerisms and their character and then give them a different name, you know. But, um, yeah, just that's about it. <laughs> well, it's interesting because you bring that to life in the two books in the series, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start, and the Book of Scattered Memories uh, by our, our guest on the program, Eva D. Beatty, B A. B E A T Y. If you're Googling the website, Eva D Beatty.com link by going to our website this week at America.us. When you have these ideas and you've had these stories and you talked with your sister about, we'd like to own that. Maybe I can write a book. Talk about the decision to be an author. What was that like when you finally decided, I, I think I can do this. I'm going to write a story. What, when did you decide to, to become an author? Well, actually, it's the love of movies. I used to go to the movies a lot. So I'm with my sister, so I'm alone. And I, I just thought it would be great if, you know, you write a book and send it off to become a movie. Of course, that's a big pipe dream. But, you know, it, it inspired me. So I got a program online and it was so simple. And I started writing and I got hooked. I got hooked on writing. And when I got to the end of Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, I never thought I was going to write any more stories. It was pretty much for me. I had more to say. So I started the book of Scattered Memories and started working on that. And, and I've been writing ever since. <laughs> I just, I love it. When you started, did you have a, a hard, fast outline where you wanted to go with Maggie's Bed and Breakfast or did it, it sort no. of evolve? It sounded like the end sort of evolved into the next book and you weren't even thinking about that. Right. Yeah. It was just, it was, you know, I got excited. I mean, I started writing and I couldn't quit, you know, and then, but when I got to the end of the book of Scattered Memories, I wasn't sure I was even going to do a trilogy. So in between that, that's when I wrote my book, Sam. Kind of got away from the storyline, wrote my book, Sam. And then when I was finished, you know, I, I took some time off in between that. I had actually broke my wrist and, of course, my right wrist and went through retirement. But when I came back, I thought, I want to do a trilogy. I want to finish, you know, the Maggie's Bed and Breakfast stories. So writing Lilies by the Lake, and I'm about 50% done. I almost not even sure that's going to be it. I'm not even sure if I'm not going to continue after this one. So it might go past that trilogy. You know, it might go into a little series. It's interesting. <laughs> is, it, is it difficult to leave a character behind or characters behind? I mean, I would think these people become part of your, at least imaginary. It's like with, with the lake, part of your imagine. They're not people, but they really are people in your mind. Uh -huh. Is it difficult to leave them behind? Well, I mean, I guess you really don't because they're in your books. Yes. So you're not really leaving them behind. And because I'm still not finished with my Maggie's Bed and Breakfast stories, even though I have managed to kill off a couple of my characters, uh, <laughs> but I told myself this time, I'm not killing anybody off this time. So instead, <laughs> I write a non-living character. I'm thinking, really? but um, yeah, so you don't, I guess you don't really leave them behind. I don't know. 
Well, it's interesting you mentioned before that uh, sort of based on people you've observed that type of thing, some of the names of the characters, maybe even characteristics, come from any family, friends, b- b- people that, you, that you've come in contact with? Yeah, yeah, some I don't want to mention, but... <laughs> <laughs> But my characters, Ben and Larry, I love them. They are, I got them my, from my brother, my brother Daniel, and his significant other. They're basically their characteristics, you know, how they act and uh, talk. Yes. And so I developed Ben and Larry around them. I would tell myself, well, what would Danny say? You know, how, how would he, how would he come up, you know, with this story? So I would just kind of think of what they would say. And that's how my, those characters are coming to life. Which has helped me. It's kind of good to have, you know, something in your life that you kind of can relate to. So yes, that's them. Yeah, and then yeah, there's family names, friends' names that I've used, but not necessarily them. You know, what I mean, just their yes. name. I just like the name, so I, I give them a name and a whole new character and personality. You know. Eva Beatty, our guest on the program, that's spelled B-E-A-T-Y. Her website is evadbeatty.com. The books we're talking about, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start, and the Book of Scattered Memories, that's part two in the, uh, the, the uh, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast series. Let's talk about the covers of the book. That's, that's something else, too. So often it's overlooked. They just sort of put a cover on at the, at the last minute. You've done a nice job with all of these. How do you come up with the, the ideas to design the covers? Well, actually, you know, this has been rebranded. So you have this cover, actually. I yes. know you have it up there. But this is actually my daughter, Erin Lugo. And this is my granddaughter, Daylin Lugo. And this is a picture of them fishing down at uh, Fairmont Park. And I had taken a lot of pictures that day. So when we did the rebranding, I, I asked them, I said, well, you can rebrand the cover and the writing, but can we keep the picture? And they let me keep it. So oh, on Maggie's that. Bed and Breakfast and the Book of Scattered Memories, this is who they are. And as far as my new one, Lilies by the Lake, you can see the cover. I know you said you have the cover. Yes. But on the back side is also my granddaughter, Riley Lugo. And it's actually a picture I took at a lily pond out there in Apple Valley. And I took the picture and stretched it. So my covers are kind of personal to me. You know, I, I'm sure I could have got a real fancy cover, but the books, especially back then, they were just for me. I had no idea I was going to branch out and, you know, rebrand them. But so it's a personal thing, a personal cover. Well, you've done a nice job with the covers and you Thank look you. and you see the pictures and that helps sell the idea. It's like, I, I like the title and wow, I like this cover. I need to see who these people are and what their story is. And you can do that with, with Eva's book, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, the two books so far in the, uh, in the series. You have strong female characters. Talk about uh, about that because these are, are very strong women that you have that you you focus on in in the two books so far. How do you come up with that? You know, I I guess for me it's just easier to write women characters. You know, because I'm telling the story. But like my mom was a strong woman, so I kind of grew up around strong women characters. And in the movies, well you know, 10 years or so ago, it's getting better now, but there wasn't as many, I think, women leading roles. And so I kind of like was bringing that in. And like I said, it's just mostly because it's easier for me, even though I have written, I write in men characters too, but I think it's just, yeah, it just started out easier for me to ride. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that makes sense. And uh, our guest on the program, Eva D. Beatty, the books are Maggie's Bed and Breakfast and New Start and the Book of Scattered Memories. Let's talk briefly. We've got a few minutes left in the program without giving too much away. What are some of the, 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 the issues that Maggie deals with in a new start? She's opening this up. I mentioned certain people come into her life and it sort of uh, throws a, a wrench into the, the situation. What are some of the, the situations that she has to deal with? Well, in Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, it's the whole first part of the book is pretty much introducing new people, yes. you know, telling you who her friends are and her sisters are. And her, her first, her first situation is she, um, she gets a letter from Alex, which is actually her husband's brother. And he comes back into her life and 
they start having an attraction. And of course, she's feeling guilty. I mean, it's way too soon. She doesn't want to meet anybody else, but he's there. I mean, he's in her life. And so doing that, I mean, they, they struggle with getting together and their friends. And that's probably one of the, the first things that happens. And then, of course, once we get a little later into the book, we start meeting Brenda and start learning things that they never knew, you know. And so it starts um, it starts picking up towards the end. And I think that's why I had to continue with the book of Scatter Memories because the storyline was there. I mean, I couldn't end it, you know, which yes. is, yeah, Brenda passing on. I had to continue on with the story. Well, the the second book, the the book of scattered memories, that is after the mother passes. Talk about finding the diary because that really is. I don't necessarily want to say shocking, but that really gives her a Maggie a different perspective. It changes her view of, of family and, and what's going on, doesn't it? Yes. Well, when she finds the diary, she decides to keep it to herself. Because when she first reads it and she learns, I don't even want to give away any, any stories. <laughs> I'm trying not to, you know, yes. give anything away. But when she starts reading it, she reads things that she just can't believe it's real, you know, and it's shocking her so badly. She doesn't want to upset her sisters. So she keeps this book and she's reading these things and she's learning more about her mother's past. So actually the book of Scattered Memories is really starts the backstory of Brenda. You know, it starts bringing in Brenda's life, you know, before, you know. Yes. And so it's kind of like you go on from there. And every time she reads something, you know, it's it's just so amazing that, um, yeah. And then when, when she has to start telling her sisters what's in this diary, to me is when it starts, the story really starts picking up. And they, and they start to realize that memocoma is hereditary. And that they could also get this mind racing disease. And so, yeah, it, it kind of, yeah. You can follow that story in the second book. I'm going to stop you before you do the uh, the giveaway there. And I didn't want to say too much in leading up to that because we want people uh-huh. to uh, to read and enjoy the story, which you will, the book of Scattered Memories. And uh, the original book in the series, the beginning, uh, Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start by Eva D. Beatty. A few minutes left in the program. Who were your influences at an early age? Were you into reading? And, and who did you read? And who do you read now that may give you ideas to uh, for future stories? You know, um, I really didn't read a whole lot growing up. You know, um, let's see. As far as reading, I think I think most of my inspiration came from movies. You know, going to movies, getting inspired on wanting to, I would I actually purchase the book. If I, if there was a movie out that I wanted to see, I would go and purchase the book, you know, like I just say like the Twilight series, you know, I didn't start really watching it till the end. My daughter actually got me hooked on it, but I had to go out and buy the book because I wanted to see the ending. So I would read the ending of the story before I would go see the movie. Oh, yes. So my so my reading pretty much came from getting the book, seeing the movie. Yeah, that's my reading. How much fun has this been for you in, in writing the story? It was something uh, again, maybe a daydream in the beginning, uh, starting with you and your mm-hmm. sister and looking at these uh, these beautiful homes and and imagining right. owning someday. Sell a few more books, and you can have your own bed and breakfast if you want to. Uh, Eva's <laughs> bed and breakfast might be book four in the in the series. But what's this been like to to actually write the book to to have it published, holding that book with your name on it for the first time? What what's this experience been like? for you like i said back then i wrote this book back in 2013 so when i first did the book i really just it was cool to have it printed i wanted to have it printed out so i printed out the book just to get that whole experience but to be honest i never expected to go past the first book i never and then once once i did that book like i said then i started getting hooked on writing then i wanted to to go further with the story and then i wrote you know the book of scattered memories and of course, I had it printed out too to give my daughter and you know just friends. Yes. And like I said it just kind of kept continuing. And then I got a call one day from an agent saying, "Yeah, we want to rebrand your books." And I thought, 
well, I'm getting ready to retire. I've, I've got all kinds of time. Why not? So uh, that's kind of where we're at now. I mean, they wanted to redesign the cover and they were nice enough to let me keep my pictures of my daughter and granddaughter on the front. So uh, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> well, it's been rebranded by Page Turner, their website, pageturner.us. And I thank them for arranging our conversation with Eva on the program today. You've done an excellent job in telling thank the you. stories in, in all of the books that are out there. Again, we mentioned Sam, a girl undercover. That book is available. You'll find that. And we got links on uh, all of these on our website this week in America.us. Uh, also at Eva's website, Eva D. Beatty, B-E-A-T-Y.com. Maggie's Bed and Breakfast, A New Start, and uh, The Book of Scattered Memories, which is the second in the series. And soon, Lilies by the Lake, which will be uh, coming out very shortly. You say the first of the year. Actually, the way this year is going, yeah. it'll be here before you know it. That's yeah. A, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I finally got the time to sit down and write again. So I'm excited. Well, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about that as well. Eva, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Love the story. Love the story that you're telling Thank with you Maggie's so Bed and Breakfast, uh, the series and the book on uh, Sam as well. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thanks for having me. It, have a great day. It has been our pleasure. Eva D. Beatty has been our guest, B-E-A-T-Y. The book is available wherever books are sold. Her website, evadbeatty.com. And a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.